a tropical island in the Indian Ocean, isolated from the rest of the world for millions of years. Madagascar. Most species that live here occur nowhere else on Earth. Animals with unusual abilities. A treasure worth protecting. Ring-tailed lemurs are one of Madagascar's icons. But the primate's paradise is changing. in southern Madagascar. Granite cliffs around 500 meters high. After a cold night, the first rays of sun finally break through. The cliffs are home to what is probably the island's most well-known icon the ring-tailed lemurs. Like every morning, they warm up in the sun. Their offspring are just a few weeks old. Ring-tailed lemurs live in small family groups. Early on, they gather in elevated positions to shake off the chill of the night. The gangs of one or two dozen ring-tailed lemurs are strictly hierarchical, and it's the females that lead the way. Bachelors usually hang out separated from the groups. They need to work hard to achieve a higher status. <coughs> to reach the top, they first have to be fully accepted. The Lima Oasis of Anza originated thousands of years ago. During a huge earthquake, large rocks broke off the mountain, forming what looks like a gigantic stone garden. Some boulders are larger than houses. On and between them, a small botanical jewel developed. More lush, than the rest of the region. The humidity here is higher due to the precious shade provided by the granite rocks. After their early sunbath, the lemurs leave and begin their search for food. A warning call. One of the animals has discovered a Dumaril's boa. Ring-tailed lemurs are easy prey. They spend most of their time on the ground, just like the boa. Except when they've been scared. Yet the snake has something hypnotic for them. The boa hunts stealthily. 
The lemurs are curious, but cautious. The snake has no chance, but it has time, plenty of time. Madagascar is one of the oldest islands on Earth. It was formed 150 million years ago when a huge piece of land broke off from the African continent. During the course of millions of years, two completely different habitats developed. Tropical forests in the east, with a hot and humid climate. A totally different situation in the west and the south. Here, aridity reigns. Spiny forests and enormous baobabs dominate the scene. The ring-tailed lemur managed to adapt to these arid regions. Of the 100 species of lemur, they are especially adept at adjusting to their surroundings. In one region, however, they are missing. Around 2,000 kilometers north of Anza lies the dry deciduous forest of Kirindi. In the extreme west of the island, rain is scarce. Baobabs deal with this very well. Water can be stored in their trunks for months. To survive here, animals have also had to develop unusual strategies. The Laborde's chameleon, for example. Everywhere, youngsters now appear. Their expected lifespan is extremely short. In just two months, they must reach adulthood and ensure the next generation. A strategy that was probably developed to counteract the extreme aridity and the challenge to find sufficient food. Laborde's chameleons are born hunters. Just the numerous molts enforce breaks in action. Growth on turbocharge. With a new outfit, the hunt continues. In six short weeks, this beautiful life will already be history. The dry deciduous forest supports a variety of species. Just the ring-tailed lemurs are strangely missing. Instead, red-fronted brown lemurs have taken their place. Body shape and size are similar to those of the ringtails.
How do they manage to survive in an area where it's the highly adaptable ring-tailed lemurs that are missing? What makes it even stranger, the island's largest predator lives here. The fossa is restricted to Madagascar. It's a lemur hunter. Only once dusk provides cover does it have a chance. For a long time, it was unclear to science where this animal belonged. Should it be counted among the dogs? Or is it rather one of the cats? Today, they are considered a cat-like carnivore. The fossa poses a serious threat to all lemurs. Nevertheless, the red-fronted brown lemurs were able to hold their own. In Anza, there are no fossas that the ring-tailed lemurs need to be afraid of. Here, they have to deal with different challenges. They often feed on poisonous plants. Ring-tailed lemurs are able to do this because they know the antidote. On the rock surface, they find minerals that neutralize the toxic substances. The bachelors must wait their turn so they don't run into trouble with the mothers. Almost daily, the lemurs come to lick the salt. Their offspring learn the ropes quickly. Salt makes them thirsty. The trail again leads them through the forest. Their goal lies high up in the mountain. On the plateau, there's something they can't do without. Water. The lemurs with the ringed tail must drink daily. The bachelors falter. Water up here is so scarce that they only get their chance once the higher ranked animals are finished. And even then, they are nervous. Suddenly, cries from the forest. One of the bachelors has sounded the alarm. The boa has struck. One of the mothers is the victim.
Her young one is in shock. Just a few minutes ago, the bachelor was still walking side by side with its mother. Intuitively, the youngster looks for a connection with the rest of the group. Orphaned lemurs have a good chance of being adopted by other females. But the bachelors have no interest in playing the babysitter. Will the little one find a new family? Back in Karindi. In the land of the fossa, big changes are on the horizon. Mating season is around the corner. In the forest, the male shows unusual behavior that has never been filmed. It seems like hormones are driving him crazy. In fact, he's rubbing scent glands on his belly and neck onto specifically selected trees, marking his territory in this way. A clear signal for other males to stay away. The bachelor is on the lookout for a female. Fossas mate on large, stable trees. Males search these trees thoroughly and systematically. Showing their unbelievable abilities. These elegant lemur hunters have perfected the art of climbing. In Karindi's forest, numerous trees are ideally suited for mating. The male doesn't know which one the female will select. Expertly, the climbing artist uses its tail to keep its balance. With their muscular body, round ears, and flexible ankle joint, fossas resemble feline predators. In Madagascar, they fill precisely this role. An older male is also on the lookout for a mate. Both are focused on a single goal, to find the tree of trees. The young male has made a decision. He will stay here and wait for the female to join him. Four months have passed since the Laborde's chameleons hatched from their eggs. For the female, only a few days remain. But her main objective has not yet been achieved.
hidden in a hollow. She takes just a few minutes to lay her eggs. The young in the egg will now wait for almost eight months until the dry season is over. A swarm of ants is on patrol. It's the task of the spotter to localize potential prey. What this little insect finds is not a daily occurrence. The Laborde's chameleon is a huge challenge for the ants. Without backup, they stand no chance. Soon the ant meets up with other members of the search party. It reports what it has found. Pheromones signal the workers to follow. Dozens turn into hundreds. The vanguard is first to reach its prey. If the swarm manages to bring this huge prize home, they will have completed their job for a while. The ants are able to carry 30 times their own body weight. For now, there are still too few. Finally, reinforcements arrive. The troop is under extreme time pressure. The chameleon is an important source of moisture, but in this extreme heat, it dries out quickly. Just before they achieve their goal, a final obstacle. Never giving up is their biggest strength. and the key to success. The forest of Karindi is truly a natural wonder, but it's threatened. Beyond the borders of the reserve, this paradise ends abruptly. It was all destroyed by slash and burn fires.
Only the trunks of the baobabs remain, memorials to a bygone era. Once, the deciduous forest reached the Indian Ocean, 30 kilometers to the west. The residents use wood and charcoal for cooking. Since the resources outside the reserve have been depleted, the people need to enter the Karindi forest more and more frequently. They hardly have a choice. Agriculture hasn't been possible here for a long time. What remains is the production of charcoal. Throughout the country, trees are being converted to cooking fuel. For many, the sale of charcoal is their only chance to survive. The majority of the charcoal makes its way into the cities. Electricity and gas connections are a rarity in Madagascar. In the meantime, the dry forests can hardly offer enough habitat for animals. The fossa is especially hard hit. For years, its numbers have been dwindling in Karindi. The young male has already been waiting for a week. It now has company. An old fighter with experience written all over its face. His elegance also seems to have suffered a little. The young male fossa remains composed. Until another competitor arrives on the scene. The newcomer is at a prime age for fossas. From now on, the males will stay close together. So far, they've been relaxed around each other. But this can change quickly as soon as a female joins them. Back in Anza, For the young lemur, whose mother fell prey to the boa, there is good news. An aunt has adopted him, despite already having her own young one to take care of. While the other lemurs can take time to enjoy the day, she must take care of her young. She wants to introduce the two to solid food. But some plants contain toxins. To start off, the youngsters need something lighter. Ripe and nutritious figs grow high up in the trees. The tasting session goes well. Interest, however, is limited. 
the little lemurs have other plans. The female remains relaxed. She's done a good job teaching the young. In Anza, the next generation seems assured. But here too, reality is different. In fact, the Lima Oasis is not even a square kilometer in size. Surrounded only by a sea of agriculture. On these lands, the population produces its livelihood. West of the oasis, the farmers are readying their rice terraces for the coming rainy season. On the other side lies a dried out lake. Here the Malagasy's breed cattle and plant peanuts. The Lima's tiny range almost fell victim to the growing demand. But then something changed. The local people realized that it was possible to make a lot of money over a long time. With tourists. Hundreds come to see the lemurs daily. Besides the entrance fees, visitors also need to pay for the services of guides. The guests from around the world are a lucrative source of income that also creates jobs. Thanks to the ring-tailed lemurs, the people of Anza are doing better today than ever. There are even plans to reforest the oasis to give the lemurs more room to live. In many other parts of Madagascar, Lemurs hardly find space anymore. Only in the most inhospitable areas, where people can't make a living, do such areas still occur. This is Tsimanam Pazosa, a huge salt pan. So hostile to life, the dead trees line its banks. The eastern part of the lagoon borders an extensive karst plateau. The lush greenery is deceptive. Rain seeps away as soon as it falls. Simanam Pazotza is perforated by caves like a Swiss cheese. Few plant species can survive here. They must all find a way to reach water. Their roots have bored themselves deep into the porous ground. the entrance to a hidden water system. Blind cavefish are the rulers of this underworld.
The Madagascar kingfisher is patient. At some point, it will catch one. Ring-tailed lemurs also live in Simanam Petsotsa. For them, it's no problem to reach the water in the caves. On the cast plateau, the lemurs are confronted with a completely new challenge. Here, it gets bitterly cold. Body facing the sun, the head turned away. The daily warm-up ritual requires a lot of time. Separated from the family, a bachelor. Like all young males, he leads a lonely life. As long as no connection has been made to a new family, he spends his time alone. The bachelor has a real problem once night falls. It gets so cold that the family members need to cuddle closely. The bachelor must find his own place to sleep. The lemurs survive here by exchanging their body heat with other individuals. Soon, it will be even colder. Until then, the bachelor must be accepted or he might freeze to death in the icy nights. In the forests of Karindi, the three male fossas have already been waiting for a female for weeks. The situation is tense. Especially the old and the very young fossa often get at each other's throats. On this night, everything changes. Suddenly, she is there. The prime male acts immediately. <laughs> then the young one also springs into action. <laughs> But he has no chance against the powerful male. <laughs> the old fossa suffers. <laughs> And the youngster still doesn't dare. Yeah. 
Has the time come for the old male? <laughs> but she has made her choice. Another suitor is not tolerated. Neither the old nor the young male achieve anything during the course of the night. The pair will mate numerous times over the coming days. This meeting, however, does not mean that there will be offspring. In Karindi, young fossas haven't been recorded for a long time. It's likely that the forest is already too small to support a stable population. During the fossa's mating season, Kirindi experiences numerous small downpours. Now the red-fronted brown lemurs show unusual behavior. They search for water. In the shells of dead snails, they are successful. Usually, their diets cover their water requirements. Maybe this behavior holds the key to their success. Are there no ring-tailed lemurs in the dry forests because they never learnt to exploit this resource? Winter in Simanam Putsotsa. The bachelor has still not found any access to the family. This night, everything is different. For a few days now, the tree is no longer their first choice. They make their way to a cave. Tamarind trees grow up from the deep. The bachelor seems uncertain, while the first animals already make their way into the underworld. For him, climbing on stalactites is still unfamiliar. Finally, he has reached the bottom of the cave. He doesn't quite seem to know what he should do here. The others search for little ledges on the cliffs. While searching for water, they probably discover that the cave remains warmer than it does on the trees. Down here, it's not about food, but rather about warmth and safety. The bachelor sees an opportunity.
Maybe he was too direct. He risks a second attempt. And has made it. At least for tonight. A year has passed. The ring-tailed lemurs in Anza once again have offspring. Sitting nearby, the youngsters from the last season. Among them, also the orphan and his stepbrother. The two have become friends. Like the rest of the lemurs in Simonam Pazotza, these two bachelors will search for a new family group soon. Can Ansa even support more ring-tailed lemurs? Inbreeding is already a threat. Contact to other families impossible. Around the oasis, there is no habitable land. The closest members of their species live dozens of kilometers away. The ring-tailed lemur is undoubtedly Madagascar's most adaptable lemur. They have found ways to neutralize the potent poisons of some plants and survive despite powerful enemies. They have accepted humans as their neighbors. And they get by comfortably, even in very inhospitable regions. There is just a single challenge they really need to fight to survive. Their habitat is disappearing incredibly quickly. Extensive regions are already uninhabitable today. Perhaps the only chance for lemurs, fossas, and all the other unique animals is a sustainable type of tourism that provides locals with a living without further destroying Madagascar's last natural hideaways.